Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So in case you're new here, my name is Mary and here on YouTube I love to share the many projects I have going on around here with you all. Today's video is sponsored by Sunday. You may remember me talking about them last year and I'm so excited to be working with their products again. In case you haven't heard of them, they are a lawn care company that sends product to your house and then you apply it to your lawn. It's all really simple but I'll share more on that later. Let's get into the video. Today I'll be sharing some outside things that have been going on around here. I know it's only early March, but you guys know me. I have had spring fever for a while and I can't wait to go outside and get some work done. Thought I'd share a few things with you. Um, I'll probably do voiceovers as I go, so let's get right into it. Today I want to make a few bluebird houses. We see a lot of bluebirds around here and at this point we don't have any houses for them. And I'm eyeing the siding that is left over from our cottages. I'm so glad for every piece that we save because I think it would be a good wood to use to make these houses with. First thing I did was cut all of my pieces to the correct size to make this little house and I'll try to have the link to the website that I use to get my measurements from down below in the description box. But there's all kinds of different sites of course that you can look up to get your measurements and different styles of boxes. Initially we had debated to make some bluebird houses using this wood for the Etsy shop, but just working with it, it's too thin. Like it's really hard to get the screw in here without you know, splitting the plywood, being it's only 3 8 inch thick. It'll work perfectly to make a few houses just for us here at home, but I definitely recommend a thicker wood if you decide to build a bluebird house. Before putting up the second house, we decided to remove the branch from the tree that will be beside it. I had a few of my gardens that I wanted to go over and do some deadheading and pull weeds. Yes, there's always weeds even in the winter time. So that's what I'm doing here on this windy but relatively warm day for Ohio. You may remember my herb garden from last summer. Here I'm just trimming down some of the herbs. I didn't get around to doing this last fall. Thank you. 
this area here by the stone steps has a lot of lavender plants and I of course don't want to trim them all the way down since it does grow on old growth but I just want to clean them up a bit make it look a little more tidy I also want to straighten up all of my little solar lights somehow they always manage to go crooked On a fun note, Marlene and I did some plant transplanting, which is always so much fun, especially this time of the year because you kind of need that plant fix. Uh, but we had bought some little plugs and here we're just transplanting them into larger pots in Marlene's greenhouse. So far we just have the two different kinds of plants, a garden phlox and Veronica. They are preannuals. So moving on to the front porch, as you can see, there's still a winter vibe going on out here. I wanna remove all of that. Porches and decks are always my favorite spaces to fix up. I can't wait, but I realize we are still really early in the year and I won't be able to you know, fix it up for the spring and summer season. We could, of course, still get some snowstorms, hard telling here in Ohio. So what I plan to do is just fix up the porch swing and the space, you know, basically under the roof here with a really early spring theme. You know, things that will be okay out here if it's still cold. So let's see what we can come up with. So let's talk just a bit about the sponsor of today's video, Sunday. The reason I love these products is they are simple, friendly, and they work with nature. You may remember last spring I had taken a soil sample of my little yard back here. I sent that in to the company and they tested it and they came up with a product that is perfect for my yard back here. You're not adding products to your yard that isn't really necessary. And I also love the idea that there's no toxic pesticides in these products. All you have to do is go to their website and sign up for a subscription and they will provide you with some easy instructions on what to do next. So far, nothing has been complicated for me. It's so easy to use. And again, I love that I can actually pronounce the names of the ingredients in these products. Today, I'll be applying the Super S. It consists of sulfur, iron, and sugar beet. So head on over to GetSunday.com slash White Cottage Company. That's just C-O, White Cottage Co. Again, that's GetSunday.com slash White Cottage Co. And make sure to enter promo code COTTAGE20 to get 20% off of your subscription. So moving back to the front porch, I can't wait to fix this up. I knew I wanted some moss planters and I love the look of moss combined with wood. So John to the rescue, we have a fallen tree up here in the woods and I figured maybe we could cut out some sections, use that for moss planters. John was able to use the chainsaw to kind of dish out the tops of these stumps. That way I have a place to, you know, set my moss or something to kind of hold it in place.
It's so much fun going into my newly organized storage room and finding my things uh, so much easier than it used to be. And in case you missed that video last week, I had shared my process of organizing some of the spaces in our home. I did manage to find some moss and some other greenery up here that I'm gonna use. And I also ordered some from Amazon and I'll try to link anything that I use here in the video down below in the description box in case you want the exact same thing. I tried to get more of an inexpensive moss. I didn't realize how pricey some of them are and I am really quite pleased with what I got. I feel it's pretty authentic looking. In fact, most of them that I got are real moss, but dried. I'm already thinking how fun it would be to use real moss to create planters like this. I do have one rock here with actual moss on it that I'm gonna use, but who knows, maybe in the future I'll fix some with live moss. I wanna create a round trellis of sorts using pieces of grapevine to top one of my tree stumps with. And here we have an old grapevine that no longer has a trellis and it still keeps growing. So sometimes I'll use it for you know decorating purposes. So basically I'll be making three circles and then tying them together with green uh, floral wire. I needed a larger piece of wire or something to connect my three circles together, so I opted to go with this floral tape, which is almost the color of the grapevine. I thought that way it wouldn't show up as much. So for the inside of my little grapevine structure that I made, I'm gonna use this wicker ball and fill it with these dogwood sprigs. These are not real, these are fake and just create a little sprawling little plant, tuck it inside and then probably surround it with moss. I had gotten some faux greenery at Hobby Lobby, and that's what I'm using here. This hanging moss is that, and then also the ferns I had used in the other stump are from Hobby Lobby. I have one more moss container I wanna fix, and I plan to put my computer table out by the swing, cause I know every now and then we might have a day where I'd be able to sit out there and do some editing. I have an old strainer that I found in my potting shed. I think this will be cute to create a little moss garden with and set it on my table.
We have the most adorable garden themed pillowcases right now in the Etsy shop. And I'm gonna use two of them for the porch swing. I think it'll be so fitting to the theme. I may continue using them throughout the summer months too. So I ended up swiping a pillow from our living room sofa. I had showed you a few videos back how I made these plain green pillow covers out of a t-shirt. And I thought the color is just so fitting for the porch swing. I really wish I had a green throw to add to the swing. If I find one, I'll definitely add it. I think that would put the finishing touch on this. Marlene and I had gone to Buckwalder's Greenhouse. It's in Worcester, uh, not too far from here. And a beautiful place if you're local, you might wanna check them out. But I found this cute little bunny. It's a glass or porcelain bunny. And I also got a hellebore. I thought it would look so pretty with some blooms on here. I wonder if I was able to give you guys some spring fever, especially if you live in a climate like we have here in Ohio. Um, it's just so much fun, you know, knowing that everything is about to burst forth with color. I will give you guys a cuteness alert for what I'm about to show you, but uh, we just received these cutouts and I think they're just the most adorable thing ever. These are available on the Etsy shop and they come in a set of three. You have the option of the unfinished, which this is your least expensive price. And then we also have some stained ones and then some that are painted white. I thought these are so fitting to what I was doing on the front porch. In fact, I may end up putting some out there on my stump with the bunny. Um, I think they'd be so cute. And again, if you're needing some lawn care products that are created for your lawn, make sure to check out getsunday.com slash white cottage company. And if you decide to go with a subscription, make sure to enter promo code cottage20 to get 20% off. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.